Hi everyone, how are you? Welcome to another lecture video on urinary bladder. Here we can see first of all the urinary bladder, the empty urinary bladder is contained within the pelvic cavity. So we know that the anterior abdominal wall, uh, they divided into the two abdominal parts and the pelvic part or pelvic cavity. So the empty bladder, it is located within the pelvic cavity then second one it is three-sided pyramid so urinary blood bladder is nothing but a pyramid which is uh, three side present apex of the bladder points forward uh, towards the symphysis pubis so apex of the urinary bladder is located anteriorly and it is towards the symphysis pubis but base lies immediately anterior to the rectum or vagina or posterior to the uh, posterior part is known as base and finally it continues with apex is the median umbilical ligament during development this was the site of the uracus so apex is connected to a fiber which is known as the median umbilical ligament so this point is very very important that the median umbilical ligament it is attached to the apex so this line should be remembered very carefully And here these two pictures here first of all here anterior side here we can see this is the apex and here the posterior side is the base so this apex is connected a ligament which is the median umbilical ligament so apex of the urinary urinary bladder it is connected to the median umbilical ligament and base here we can see it is lies posteriorly and first of all this is the lateral border this is the lateral border and this is the anterior border and this border is the posterior border so the urinary bladder as it is three-sided pyramid it presents lateral border anterior border and posterior border with apex and base and the apex of the urinary bladder is connected to the median umbilical ligament in the second picture here we can see this is the apex and the fiber which is the median umbilical ligament this side is the base or posterior surface and this here we can see the anterior border lateral border and posterior border and this figure at uh, the showing different part including uh, you can see the triangle of the urinary bladder Uh, so some other important information regarding the in urinary bladder the inferior aspect of the bladder is a retroperitoneal but upper parts of the urinary bladder is covered by the peritoneum so this point is very very important that the urinary bladder is partly interperitoneal that means the upper part of the urinary bladder it is covered by the peritoneum but lower part of the urinary bladder it has no connection with the peritoneum the trigon is the least mobile part of the urinary bladder there we can see the trigon this is the trigon and this trigon is the most fixed part that means the least mobile part of the urinary bladder empty bladder the urinary orifices are approximately two to three centimeter apart so this is very less distance in case of empty bladder while there is no urine in urinary bladder it is about two to three centimeter but when it fills it reaches up to five centimeter difference between these two ureteric orifices here we can see the ureter this one-sided ureteric orifice another sided ureteric orifice and in case of filled urinary bladder it distance is five centimeter but when the bladder is empty the distance is usually two to three centimeter uh, here we can see this is the ureter here this is the ureter and it opens in the urinary bladder and uh, here actually showing the different constriction important constriction of the ureter first of all uh, the pelvic ureteric junction and the second when it uh, crosses the pelvic brim and crossing the vas deferens and finally when it uh, enters to the wall so these are the normal construction of the ureter again first of all pelvic ureteric junction when it crosses the pelvic beam when it crosses the ureter uh, crossing the ureter uh, ductus difference or vas difference 
and when it enters into the urinary bladder and opening of the orifice so this five important area of the constriction and here urinary bladder artery supply and venous drainage the artery supply of the urinary bladder is from the superior vesical artery and inferior vesical artery so vesical that means the urinary bladder so some of the blood vessel it comes upper part of the urinary bladder so it is called the superior vesical artery and some of the artery it comes in the lower part of the vesicle that means the urinary bladder which is inferior vesical artery and the superior and inferior vesical artery they are derived from the they are derived from the internal iliac artery here we can see this is the internal iliac artery and this internal iliac artery actually it is a branch of the common iliac artery so superior and inferior vesicle artery they are the branch from the internal iliac artery now here we can see the venous drainage in case of male first of all venous plexus form and it is known as vesicoprosthetic venous plexus so in case of male vesicoprosthetic venous plexus form and then it drains and in case of female it also form plexus and which is known as the vesico uterine plexus so in case of male it is vesico prostate plexus and in case of female it is vesico uterine plexus and the venous plexus will ultimately drain into the internal iliac vein so in both cases the common term is internal iliac internal iliac so the artery supply is finally derived from the internal iliac artery and the venous drainage finally drain into the internal iliac vein and the artery supply is usually by the superior vesical artery and inferior vesical artery which is branched for the internal iliac artery and venous drainage finally drains into the internal iliac vein but first they form the plexus in case of male it is vesicoprosthetic plexus and in case of female it is vesico uterine plexus so here we are showing the different artery here first of all here we can see this is the common iliac artery and this common iliac artery divide into the external iliac artery which goes to the lower limb and another one is internal iliac artery and this internal iliac artery it supplies the viscera and walls of the pelvic cavity and here we can see this is the superior vesical artery and this superior vesical artery here this is the urinary bladder you can see here this is the urinary bladder and the superior vesical artery it supplies the upper part of the urinary bladder then here we can see this is the inferior vesical artery and this is the urinary bladder and the inferior vesical artery it supplies the lower part of the urinary bladder and prostate so the superior vesical artery it supplies the upper part and inferior vesical artery it supplies the lower part of the urinary bladder now these are the veins first of all here you can see this is the urinary bladder and from the urinary bladder they drains into the internal iliac vein but first of all they form plexus around the urinary bladder here we can see this is the urinary bladder here the urinary bladder here the urinary bladder first of all the different type of plexus here we can see this one is the plexus here the plexus here the plexus and the plexus is different in case of male and in case of female and they finally drain into the internal iliac vein now the lymphatic drainage which is also important and from the urinary bladder lymphatics drain into the external iliac lymph node internal iliac lymph node and operator node so this slide is also important uh, the urinary bladder it drains it lymphatic and the external iliac lymph node internal iliac lymph node and obturator node now in this picture you can show the external iliac lymph node and the external iliac lymph node they are located along the line of the external iliac vessels and internal iliac lymph node they are located along the internal iliac vessels and the obturator lymph, or lymph node they are also located along the obturator vessel now the innervation of the urinary bladder that means the nerve supply of the urinary bladder 
First of all, this is the parasympathetic nerve and the sympathetic nerve. The parasympathetic nerve it derived from the pelvic splenic nerve and it causes the relaxation and causes the urination. On the other hand, the sympathetic nerve it derives fiber from lumbar one and lumbar two. Here we can see lumbar one and lumbar two via the hypogastric plexus. And the parasympathetic nerve causes detrusor muscle contraction, results in voiding. And sympathetic nerve it is really avoid voiding. And the sympathetic nerve it causes a relaxation of the urinary bladder and causes a store of the urine for a certain time. The muscle of the trigon is innerved by the sympathetic nerve nervous system. And the external urethral sphincter is under conscious control. So external urethral sphincter it is relaxed voluntarily. Here they showing the different innervation of the urinary bladder. So this is all about the urinary bladder. Thank you all.